Osiris. Hello. What's going on? It's your girl, Karina Reichman, coming at you from Palm Springs, California, and just delighted to be connected via the wonders of the telephone with my main man holding it down in NYC, Isaac Sloan. Isaac, how's it going, pal? What's going on? Karina, it's great to catch up with you. I love thinking of you in Palm Springs, touring the West Coast (laughs) with Marco Benevento. It's just a fantastic thing to imagine and take in through your anecdotes and your photos. (laughs) <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's great. It's been, uh, I mean, we just played one show so far, but man, we got uh, a whole lot more to go. And we played Pappy and Harriet's out in Joshua Tree last night. And uh, got to say, I mean, what a locale for a show. It's just beautiful. I do love the desert as a thing. You know what I mean? I definitely like the ocean more. <laughs> but I got, I got love for the desert, man. I think I just like sand. <laughs> but uh, that was great. I'm playing San Diego tonight at the Casbah. And then tomorrow, which is Thursday, the uh, the day this podcast comes out, will be um, the Terragram Ballroom in good old Los Angeles, California. So hope to see everyone there. And then it's, you know, got a lot going on. Santa Cruz. We've got San Francisco, we've got Sonoma, and then boom, up to the Pacific to, to the Pacific Northwest with Marco Benevento. So yeah, please, if you're on the West Coast and you are ready to go, we're ready to give it to you. So um, come uh, come to a show. I hope to see you somewhere, you know, out along this great coast. It's been uh, it's been great so far. It's been very luxurious so far because we've gotten to stay, uh, you know, two nights in the same place, basically, which doesn't happen often when you're on the road. Uh, but more on that later. More on that later. Everything is uh, swell in my world. Everything's swell in your world, Isaac? You know, Karina, I'm holding it down in New York. Things are really good. I have good. to say, things we love feel it. really good. Thank you for that asking. That is exactly it. Of course, dude. <laughs> Who would I be if I didn't ask? It's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. Um, Sick, dude. Well, so much is happening. So much just keeps on coming. But our boy... The main man himself, Bob Weir and the Wolf Bros, they just did a four-night run at the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts in Washington, D.C. with the National Symphony Orchestra. Like, what is going on with this? It looked so cool. Nothing like seeing Bobby in a suit. Not going to lie to you. (laughs) Isaac, what do you make of this? This is some wild stuff. Well, it, it's really cool. You know, I think this kind of snuck up on me, uh, you know, in terms of seeing, as you said, uh, pictures of our main man, Bob Weir, in a tuxedo, uh, you know, at, at the uh, uh, Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts. I know these shows are rescheduled uh, and uh, it's kind of been a long time coming in another uh, in another sense. Uh, but just seeing some clips of Bobby playing with uh, the National Symphony Orchestra behind him. I mean, it's it's just I, I've always thought it was cool how the Grateful Dead's music has a symphonic symphonic element to it. And, uh, you know, you and I saw a Warren Haynes uh, t- do his take on that, uh, playing with uh, local orchestras. Uh, we saw that in Central Park, and I thought that was spectacular. But, uh, you know, the man himself, Bob Weir, uh, with his Wolf Bros and the Wolf Pack uh, collaborating with all of these uh beautiful uh orchestral instruments uh it really it it was quite a sort of sound to behold it's so cool and i do agree and of course i loved the uh warren haynes symphonic celebration of the grateful dead music that we saw and and the grateful dead music itself just lends itself so well to that instrumentation i find it's so thick and lush with so many disparate parts going on and everything it's pretty, uh, pretty amazing thing to behold, and obviously they, uh, they took no prisoners here in Washington D.C. They played just about everything you'd want to hear. Oh my God! Over the course of these nights, it just kept on going. So, very, very cool. And of course, it's really fun that they, the orchestra starts without them playing the overture, and then they come out and rip Grateful Dead music. I mean, <laughs> sounds great to me and it's a 96 member orchestra 96 
Yeah, no, that's what? pretty expansive. And also just like, you know, uh, electric instruments meeting acoustic instruments in a theater context that is really designed for classical music. I went to an opera there once. Uh, you know, there are, it's rare that I really feel like I want to hear from the musician about the experience that they just went through because usually it's like, you know, how, how are you supposed to capture that? And, you know, I don't want to bother Bob Weir and say, hey, Bob, you know, tell me about playing with this, uh, you know, a National Symphony Orchestra. But in this instance, I just I kind of want the deets about what it was like to be in that room and like rehearsals and like, I don't know, mixing the sounds such that all of the different components, the the Wolf Bros and, and the uh, orchestra, you know, working in tandem, selecting the songs. Like, I'm just curious a little bit about how this all came together. No kidding. And how they pulled it off, you know, again, nine that many people in an orchestra. I know that's not uh, unheard of at all for, you know, orchestral bands and whatever I it's just so beyond the realm of uh, comprehension for my small brain you know I'm just like that's so many people to get to play in unison and in harmony with one another it's just an incredible feat so bless these guys can't even imagine I mean it's uh it's an incredible thing and man I mean on Saturday set one right we have Overture followed by China Cat I know your writer, of course. Row Jimmy, the other one, Morning Dew. And then second set, we got Playing in the Band, Lost Sailor, Saint of Circumstance, Wharf Rat, Shakedown, Sugar Mag, and Sunshine Daydream, and then just the Wolf Brothers. They did um, they did Ripple and One More Saturday Night. That sounds fantastic. And then the next day, I'm just doing the weekend shows because there were, you know, uh, the other ones were last week. It's just so far away. But uh, oh, on Sunday, we have Playing in the Band. Sorry, Sunday. I don't know if I said that. Uh, Playing in the Band, Uncle John's Band, Dark Star, Jack Straw, Morning Dew. Great on paper. Wow. Uh, and then the second set, we have the other one, Shakedown, Days Between, uh, and then they reprised Dark Star, Uncle John's band playing in the band and then Broke Down Palace and then at the very end Just the Wolf Bros did the Terrapin Station Suite. <laughs> wow. I mean, I wish we could have been there. Come yeah, on. no, I mean, that's a real <laughs> feast for uh, anyone who likes music but particularly fans of the Grateful Dead and, uh, you know, I myself a fan of uh, what, what Bob Weir does uh, anywhere. especially on that on that tip you know there's uh been this great photograph of uh bobby and pete shapiro in their tuxedos eating cake um you know theoretically after (laughs) the performance and man talk about being a fan of anything bob weird does anywhere because that photo of him eating the cake that really that took the cake for me (laughs) i'm such a fan of that photograph Really well, good stuff. Really, I mean, good it's stuff. interesting. Like, I don't know. I just think about uh, people that I know who, you know, saw the dead in the seventies, eighties, and and nineties. And I, I think there was uh, for a long time a sort of rift between people who were just so hardcore about Jerry Garcia and people who embraced uh, Bob Weir. And and now, I mean, it, it, uh, you know, obviously we don't we don't know what Jerry would be up to, but Bob uh, and his care for, uh, you know, this music and and what what he's gone on to do uh, with it, uh, I mean, it just uh, really further cements him as uh, such uh, a, you know an artist with such an illustrious career, and um, it's kind of amazing that he's he's gotten all of the chapters in that he he has been able to get and you know it's like you say then you just see a picture of him eating cake and it's like oh my god <laughs> it's that guy <laughs> it's like he is so he's so um i mean of course but he's just tenaciously going for it yeah, year exactly. after year project after project just tearing it up into his older age and it's just like May we all be so lucky and may we all be so tenacious, you know? It's an incredible, incredible thing to be able to be alive in the time of of him and all of, you know, the post-GD 
members that have uh, that have made it on and are continuing the legacy of the music and the tradition of the music. And it's just, uh, you know, people are, you know, so fervent about it as we are and as so many continue to be. And it's just, you know, keep it going in all these different forms and the people will follow. And we are. Um, And speaking of a man who has really just, you know, sunk his teeth into that music and his own and so many things, he's ubiquitously on the scene, talented, beyond compare, one of my favorites. We have Mr. Warren Haynes bringing back Christmas Jam, Isaac. This is really hot goss, if you ask me. (laughs) Oh, absolutely. I mean, you uh, have not only had the uh, pleasure of attending a Christmas Jam, but you got to play the first Christmas Jam uh, you were at a couple of years ago now, right? Correct. It was uh, it was 2018, believe it or not, which just seems like, you know, uh, (laughs) really yesteryear. But I remember I remember us being in high school one year, Isaac, and they dropped a Christmas Jam lineup that at the time seemed so awesome to us. And of course, I don't remember what it was, but I remember us both looking at it being like, oh my God, like, how do we, how do we go? But the idea of going to Asheville, North Carolina, like it just wasn't in the cards (laughs) or feasible or, you know, anything. But I remember being absolutely awestruck with you about a Christmas Jam lineup in like 2010 or something. So Definitely been a long observer, and you know, I'll say it right now. Before before I even had heard a note of fish, I was a young, twelve, thirteen year old government mule fan. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, I really I found out about government mule early on somehow, and it really did it for me. And Warren Haynes, I definitely cited as if not my favorite guitar player, like one of my favorite guitar players for a very long time there and I just have nothing but admiration for him his work ethic his ridiculous skill set and uh and yeah I got to play Christmas Jam with Marco Benevento uh in 2018 and that year was stacked um Dave Grohl was there and uh I mean Mike Gordon obviously us obviously Government Mule they did uh Dark Side of the Mule I believe Grace Potter was there um it was super, super fun. Honestly, I, I really think that was one of the better and more fun shows I've ever done. And of course, it's in an arena, <laughs> which is a trip to be performing in an arena if you're me or probably if you're anyone. Um, so that was just such a blast. And uh, and obviously, it's taken a few years off pandemic related and, and whatnot. And now here we are. We're back at the Harrah's Cherokee Center, December 10th of this year boom it's in Asheville North Carolina as it always is and Isaac would you like me to read the lineup for the people or would you like to read the lineup for the people all right check it out I'm going for it I'm going for it number one Phil Lesh and Friends featuring Warren Haynes John Schofield John Modeski and John Molo I mean yes please is all I can say about that is a great configuration of Phil Lesh and Friends I mean we have Warren and Schofield too good to, like with me i'm like everything about that i love i really love it <laughs> we have tyler childers government mule beth hart brothers osborne and dinosaur jr with special guests his golden messenger solo oddly freed scott metzger katie jacoby mike barnes and more and i mean obviously we have a lot to say about this but i think we'd be remiss to to you know not mention Scott Metzger and specifically Katie Jacoby. I mean, th- these are very close friends of ours and Katie and us. I mean, we've been friends for so many years. She, for those who don't know, she is an illustrious violinist and uh, she has joined the who. Yeah, literally the who in the last few years, which has been an absolute dream to watch, let alone t- to be her flying around and playing with Roger Daltrey's band also and you know doing the most incredible illustrious gigs and we couldn't be happier for her and prouder of her and it's been an amazing thing to see and of course I remember you know her sitting in with J-Rad many years ago at this point it's probably like 2015 uh when she first sat in and uh and she she fell in love with Scott Metzger on the spot 
and it was uh, it, it's been an amazing journey. They're married now, absolutely incredible, and it's just so cool to see her and Scott, of course. But really, Katie, I mean, that's my girl. That is my home girl. Like you know, she played in uh, Phil Lesh and Friends over the summer as well, which is absolutely incredible, and uh, it's just amazing to to watch it all happen. So go, Katie. Number one, go, Katie. She also Number happens two. to be an amazing individual, <laughs> like just the best ever. Oh, dude. I mean, she is the funniest and most loving, wonderful human. We literally love you, Katie. Where are you at, girl? <laughs> we, I know where you're at. You're on, uh, you're on tour with The Who. But after that, we're going to kick it. And uh, it's just it's an amazing thing. So if you're not hip to Katie Jacoby, go follow her on all of the things. She is spectacular, and you won't regret it. But otherwise, I mean, Isaac, to see Dino Jr. on this lineup really got me um, revved up in ways that I wasn't expecting to be revved up in. <laughs> well, I, I understand why. I mean, Dinosaur Jr. is a prolific, amazing band, an incredible live act. Seeing them in in the this context, which leans a little bit more in the uh, you know uh, improvisational Grateful Dead realm of things uh, is very very exciting and uh, the potential of Jay Maskus and Warren Haynes trading licks uh, at the beginning and the end of the night uh, that's just I just got chills yeah I mean that's really what you want to see uh, you know no kidding I uh, and again Jay Maskus you know one of the most underrated guitar players uh, on the planet and Dino Jr. as such you know a three piece beyond the sum of their parts talk about like the loudest band on the planet with you know more amps on stage than you know I, I can't even tell you it's absolutely like watching a bomb self-destruct when you go and watch them play in the best way I'm such a huge fan of the band and their output and it is it's just amazing to see them on this lineup and it's it, to me that's like you know the the diamond in the rough here you know I'm like holy shit Dino Jr.'s on it and of course everything else is going to be spectacular too but very excited for everyone taking in Christmas Jam this year. The pre-sale is Friday the 14th at 10 a.m. And the public on sale is the following Friday, October 21st at 10 a.m. And again, the date is December 10th, 2022 at Harris Cherokee Center in Asheville, North Carolina. And let me shout out Asheville, North Carolina for a second. That town fucking rules. And if you're not hip, you should go take a trip. <laughs> and check this out um great stuff great stuff isaac do you have any further thoughts on the subject or should we move right along you know i think we can move right along i think there will be more on christmas jam after it happens i think you're so right i think you're so right great event and go go warren is all i can say warren you hold such a special place in my heart it's an honor to know you at this point and when i was 12 years old and never thought that we would know each other <laughs> I was such a fan at the government mule shows and now it's just amazing to to you know behold everything he's up to and continue on in his own legacy and in carving his path forward it's a beautiful thing um but Isaac our third uh, our third subject of the day is a little I would say somber I would say I would say disconcerting I would say real and very re I real was the word I was thinking actually real absolutely it's uh let's 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 get real and let's you know not uh pussyfoot around the subject here you know and it's kind of we're going to talk about you know just the real harsh realities of being a touring musician these days and this is sort of spurred by you know a number of of announcements and you know kind of open letters that uh, a few bands have kind of put forth um, recently on social media, kind of canceling tours and explaining why. And the big one came from one of my favorite bands, Animal Collective, um, earlier this week. And Animal Collective basically detailed how, you know, they had to cancel their European tour coming up because of the innumerable... <laughs> harsh realities facing them financially if they were going to go through with it and these are 
really very strange and difficult times to be a touring musician or a recording artist in general. That's number one. And of course, here I am, you know, a pipsqueak at the beginning of my career, seeing a band like Animal Collective not be able to pull off their shows. And it's terrifying. It's not, it's unsettling. It's not a good feeling, you know? And of course, things have been just devalued and, you know, decommodified in such a way in the music industry, meaning, you know, streaming. <laughs> has just flipped everything on its ass you know so now we, people aren't buying records and what they can do is buy concert tickets but you're looking at covid realities you're looking at the cost of gas the price of hotels bands getting paid very little to perform everything getting split a million ways you know depending on how big the band is and then of course what you don't see you know manager takes a percentage agents take a percent like all of this stuff and it just boils down to very very little once everyone's had their cut and if things aren't laid out such that they are phys- fiscally possible it's not fucking possible you know and basically i i really respect and appreciate bands like animal collective that have kind of come out and just you know set the record straight about how like of course you know there's sort of this like rock and roll ethos of like fuck it man like we'll sleep in the van we'll eat dirt it doesn't even matter anything to make the show happen but at the end of the day if you are destitute because of it you know and you just can't make it happen for any of these very very reasonable reasons of course you can't make it happen you know, and uh, it's it's been a wild thing to, uh, you know, kind of see. And it's just the harsh realities of it are kind of crashing down upon us. And a lot of artists are speaking out about how difficult it really is. And let me tell you, it really is. Yeah, no, I mean, real is the word that came to mind, because uh, like you said, there can be this sort of ethos and. Uh, also image, I think, uh, uh, about uh, success and uh, also br- braving it or, or roughing it out on, on tour. And part of what's so interesting about the artists who come forward uh, is a sort of demystifying and getting into the details and saying, look, uh, you know, the uh, getting out on the road is a, is a crucial part and following the passion of it. And, uh, you know, all of that is, is uh, obviously... Um, integral and and so important and and something that we all care about as as musicians as as fans and and family and uh you know beyond um and also uh there are are these realities about it that are uh i I don't know i think uh easy to um uh kind of i I don't know not know about or or uh sure you know not not uh uh, face until you uh necessarily have to or or um you know there's more awareness about it absolutely and of course you know it is such a big part of this you know is like earning your stripes right and just like getting out on the road and playing to nobody for years and years until you know, that's like where the word of mouth comes from about your band, right? You're playing and maybe you're playing to 20 people the first time through town, but you turn those 20 people into fans for life and then they tell 20 people and then next thing you know, you know, you're, you're, you know, you've heard all of these stories about how you, you have to do that when you're first starting out and all these things, but it's a really real thing when you know the costs of doing so are innumerable on your psyche your non-existent checkbook you know what I mean like things just can get depleted and at 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 what point do you wipe your hands clean and just say hey listen I just you know the the toll it would take on us to go through with these shows as animal collective said you know they were basically like you know a lot of them you know had to cancel a bunch of shows earlier this year because they got covid and blah 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 and the financial hit that that kind of you know gave the band and uh, you know they were counting on that income it set them back in a huge way and they were trying to get to europe and 
you know, the shipping costs of like shipping merch there and, and, and of course, plane tickets and all of these things. It just, they were staring down, you know, the barrel of a gun that was not looking so good, you know, and it's, I think it's a valiant thing to come clean and to just say like, hey, look, you know, this was not going to be feasible for us and we're sorry because, you know, all we all want to do is just play. We want to play. We want to spread the vibes of the music, you know, and when you can't, you just can't and it's heartbreaking and it's super difficult and um, there is uh, another artist that came out recently, Santi Gold, who we loved uh, you know, back in the day and continue to love and she continues to make incredible music. Um, but she came out with this whole statement canceling her tour and it was very, it went very viral and was sort of, you know, the thing that everybody was posting about for a bit there. And I feel like I should read, I should read this quote from Santi Gold because it really, it was poignant, very well written. She says, I want to tell you that for me, it has taken a toll through anxiety, insomnia, fatigue, vertigo, chronic pain, and missing crucial time with my children. She continued, in the place that I'm in, in the place that the music business is in, it feels like I've been hanging on trying to make it to the ever distant finish line, but my vehicle has been falling apart the whole time. The bumper fell off, the wheels one at a time, the steering wheel, and finally the whole bottom fell out. And here I am thinking, should I just hold the doors up and run? And my little heart that has been working way beyond its limits, my whole body in fact, and my soul too, are screaming at me. And I think that's a very eloquent, <laughs> eloquently put way of, of saying it's just not easy. And sometimes, you know, you just have to say, and for what? You know, you got to take care of yourself first because if you're not in a good way, no one at your shows is going to ha- be in a good way and it's just not sustainable. So that was, a, that was a poignant quote and she canceled the tour and also kind of echoed the sort of sentiment of the economics of it just being all awry and not adding up. And of course, now everyone and their and their sister is on tour, which is such a beautiful thing, but it also makes it a very competitive market and people are, you know, spending their money in selective ways as they should, myself included, you know, and it's not, you know, you can't go to four shows a night even if you wanted to, you know, and, um, you know, basically us here at Inappropriate Happiness saying, my God, like, you know, we salute everyone for trying to make this work in any way, shape, or form that they can. But listen, when you can't, you just can't. And number one is health and (laughs) feeling well, you know, and well enough to be committed to your craft and be able to do it in a sustainable way. And man, I mean, if you can't, you really can't. So, I mean, I'm all for people being transparent about the realities out there and I'll tell you guys right now I lost an absolute crazy amount of money earlier this year you know opening for a band where you when you open again these economics are are super flawed when you open for the most part you're getting paid dirt money and you know you have to pay for hotel rooms every night and you have to split that amongst you know or you know you have to pay your band and you have to pay for gas and figure out everything and you know if you're me you're renting a van like it's not sustainable it's not a model that can go on so things need to change in so many ways I don't know where to start I'm not uh, an economist (laughs) but man it's uh it's crazy out there and I salute everyone trying to make it work and I salute everyone hanging it up for however long they need to and it's uh It's not easy out there, but cheers to all touring musicians trying to get it out there and just trying to play and trying to spread that joy because we really need it. But man, we know it comes at a cost. So thank you. (laughs) That's my soapbox speech. uh, Absolutely. (laughs) I mean, I I don't have anything to add other than it just felt like a complete no brainer to uh, address this on the podcast and wanted to talk with you about it uh, after seeing the Animal Collective announcement and uh, also to send uh, my support out there to anyone on the road, anyone who is making music and uh, making it uh, go uh, however they are. Um, 
because yeah, I mean, it's I, I just total in in awe and um in in I at a loss for words for uh you know how hard uh, it is and and how much people are working to make it possible. It's a wild thing. It's a wild thing. And as we know, and if everybody listening, at, you know, this deep in the podcast knows this is quite literally like what we live for. It's what I, this is, it's so important to us to go see live music and have this whole thing sustain itself, you know, and like, you know, the whole conception of this podcast is to spread that joy that you get from seeing this live music and, you know, just music in general. So we uh we take this uh not lightly and we hope you don't either and you know for what it's worth merch is important buying tickets early is important all of these things you know if you love if you love a band support the band it's uh it's not easy out there so cheers to all Isaac, I mean, shit, this brings us uh, maybe to the end of our road. I mean, what the ever-loving fuck, my friend. <laughs> it's, um, well, you it's got a crazy... show to play tonight. I do, because I am one of the rogue ro- warriors of the road, <laughs> braving it out here. No, I kid. Um, I sort of kid. But yes, I am playing tonight in San Diego at the Casba with Mr. Marco Benevento. By the time this podcast comes out, the show will have been played already. So let's just say Thursday, October 13th, I will be playing the Terragram Ballroom in Los Angeles, California. And uh, I'm looking forward to it and looking forward to this whole run with Marco. It's really been a blast so far, though it has just begun. And I know by the time we talk next week, I will be worn hard and put away with. And, uh, you know, I will have seen some shit. And I am always so delighted to get to play and, you know, take it not for granted a day in my life that I get to do this in any shape or form to 10 people to a thousand people whatever it is i'm thrilled to get to play music anytime i could be on stage is just the biggest blessing so thank god (laughs) for trying to make it work out here and uh oh yeah for the record come uh come see my tour in uh, december northeast buy yourself a ticket can't wait (laughs) these harsh realities are ready to go isaac's gonna be there it's gonna be hot um super stoked and uh yeah thank you all for listening this week guys this podcast is brought to you by our main man rjb from the osiris media network and we are delighted to uh you know he actually last week on twitter um has accepted our uh threat slash invite to take him to dinner so (laughs) we can't wait for that and uh it's gonna be a blast and we thank every one of you for listening to the podcast and we thank osiris for making it all possible and getting it out to your ear holes week after week and isaac i look forward to making it rain with you sonically next week my friend likewise have a great show tonight have a great rest of your tour and uh yeah next week next week and we hope you guys have a great rest of your week and stay inappropriately happy and inappropriately positive despite the challenges that face us all cheers everyone bye-bye bye-bye i've been jumping turnstiles hailing taxis with intent do you need directions i bet it's not where you osiris